Welcome to Hampden Park, Glasgow, the venue for the 2014 Commonwealth Games Athletics Competition and the Closing Ceremony. The Games Organising Committee have set up this YouTube channel to tell the story of the build-up to the Games. And the first person we'll hear from is John Scott, the 2014 Chief Executive. All right, John, great to talk to you. Tell me, first of all, about 2014. Oh, where to begin? I mean, huge opportunity, great event, absolutely delighted, obviously. It's coming here to Glasgow, coming here to Scotland. I'm, I think I'm very privileged to have the position of delivering it, but uh, that, that's me. I mean, the Games, well, where we are is we're, uh, we're in a very detailed planning stage now. Um, we're, what, just about a year on from securing the, uh, the, the Games back in Sri Lanka. That was a huge party, a huge celebration. Fortunately, we haven't had the, uh, the, the hangover after that. Good preparation for the bid. Um, we're, in, we're, we're, we're in a period, really, of, of re reviewing what the offer said. How are we going to deliver that? How are we going to make that really meet the expectations of everybody that was involved in the bid? Um, and, you know, I think we're doing quite well. What's the organising committee's job? In essence, we're here to deliver a Games. We're here to deliver 17 sport programme over 11 days and everything that that entails. So it isn't just, remember, it's not just the sport. We've got opening ceremonies, we've got cultural offerings. Uh, surrounding the Games will be a, a big cultural programme. We actually handle a huge number of VIPs. I've been told to expect something like 200 heads of state, royals, prime ministers. So it's, it, it's a massive logistical enterprise. Who's involved? Who's all on the committee? Our committee is made up of the, the, the sort of the, the three owners of the company. That's the Glasgow City Council, the Scottish Government and the Commonwealth Games Council for Scotland. We then have a board and that board in addition to them has membership from the International Federation. That's the Commonwealth Games Federation. And then we have up to five independent directors, one of whom is our chairman, Lord Smith of Kelvin. We're here in Hampden Park, one of the great iconic Scottish facilities for football. But tell me about the ones you're going to build. Well, one of the great things and one of the great benefits of bringing the games to Glasgow is unlike many other big multi-sport games, we haven't actually had to build too much. One of the big challenges with big sport events is how are you going to provide a, a, you know, the requirements for a one-off event that meets legacy requirements. Here in, here in Glasgow, having got so many of the, the venues already in place, we're not challenged in the same way. What we are going to get is, is venues, new venues that the city needed that were planned already. So the velodrome, the indoor sports arena, we're adding a 50 metre swimming pool to Tollcross Park. So we are actually seeing some legacy benefit from major venues, but we haven't got the scale of operation that many other cities have had to do. And you mentioned Hamden, of course, this is going to be a spectacular transformation. We're going to see this football arena transformed into the athletics arena. Wow. We're going to raise a platform uh, about one and a half meters. We'll cover over some of the seats at the lower levels. And what you will have is a full scale athletics track with a grass infield. And we'll have the closing ceremony here as well. Now, the games feel a long time away, five years away. What are you doing just now? We're planning, we're, we're getting to grips with what was in the bid. I mean, remember a bid is, is a promise, it's an offer. What we have to do is translate that offer into practical delivery. So at the moment, we're doing a lot of work on the venues. We're, doing, we're beginning to start work on what's called the overlay. The overlay is how you transform uh, venues like here into something that they were not designed for, uh, what, how we equip the current sports are venues to meet the needs of the very, very top end of sport and of course how we transform other venues on a temporary basis. We're using the SECC and the exhibition halls there. They've got to be turned into a sports arena. So we begin looking at the planning around that. And of course one of the things we're also getting our heads around is that commercial offering. How we're going to go out there uh, and secure the, the commercial partners we need to bring much needed revenue to make the games a success. You mentioned revenue. I mean, how much are these games actually costing? The budget we've got is 373 million. Now, embedded in that is an element of capital investment. Uh, unusually for a games, we're both the organising committee and a developer of venues. If you contrast that to London, where you've got an Olympic development agency as well as the organising committee, we combine a bit of that. So within that is, is, is direct capital investment in swimming pools, in the, uh, in the, the velodrome, in the, uh, in the new hockey pitches. So there are venues we are investing in directly. The balance is the operational budget that we have. That, of course, is about marketing the games, promoting the games, servicing the needs of the athletes, all the stuff that, that, that people take for granted as well. I mean, 
you're very experienced in the world of broadcast and media and you'll know the technology that has to be provided now to satisfy the demands of that sector. We have to provide all of that. So out of that 373, uh, 298 of it is being provided by uh, the Scottish Government and Glasgow City Council and the balance we raise from uh, the commercial marketplace, ticket sales, uh, the promotions, the merchandising that we can do. Sounds an amazing legacy. What sports can we see? What's going to be out there to watch? That's the question I always dread because there are 17 sports on the program and you can guarantee if you haven't got it written down in front of you, the first thing you do is forget one of them. The great thing about the Commonwealth Games, it is a re it, it, it's an eclectic mix of sports. You've, you've got the sort of blue ribbon sports from the Olympic program like swimming, like athletics, but then you've got some real Commonwealth bedrock sports like netball like bowls. Rugby, of course, is in this program, which is fantastic because that is a real Commonwealth sport and the Rugby Sevens is one of the highlights of what we'll be offering. So there's something there for everyone and we've got indoor, we've got outdoor, we've got team, we've got men, we've got women. It is, it's a very interesting program mix that I think reflects what is that unique family of the Commonwealth. John, I'm from Glasgow. My family are from Glasgow, always have been way back. What does Glasgow get from this and what does Scotland get from this, do you think? I think what Glasgow gets is a unique opportunity to tell the world what a fabulous place it is. I mean, uh, you can tell from my accent, I'm not from Glasgow, but I've been here seven months and, and I really have fallen in love with the city. I think it's an extraordinary place. And what we have here is, is an absolute ambition and drive to, to, to engage with these games, get the most out of these games. Remember, there's going to be a TV audience of in excess of 1.5 billion. You're going to have 71 nations coming here, bringing all their support we're going to have a real opportunity to promote Glasgow and Scotland through that event. So in addition to that, that, that investment that we've mentioned in physical infrastructure, what Glasgow is going to get, I think, is a real sense of pride, a real sense of can do. And that, I, I don't think you can put a value on that. John, you've talked about the games, but how do you want these games finally to be remembered when they've happened? Well, I think firstly, I want them to be remembered for an outstanding Scottish team success. I really want to see Scotland do well. I want to see us win in excess of 33 medals. Now, I shouldn't be saying that as the chief executive of the organising committee because I have a responsibility to all the countries, obviously, and I will fulfil that obligation. But the, the, the opportunity for Scottish sport to get an uplift from this is enormous. But let's not forget the other areas. I mean, the pride, the engagement, the opportunity for, for, for Glasgow, for the whole of Scotland to be involved in the Games is very real, it's very tangible. We're going to need 15,000 volunteers. They're going to come from across Scotland. Now, our ambition is to work with the agencies here in Scotland to equip individuals who maybe have never thought of volunteering or perhaps have, have not got a skill to get into the workplace to use the Games as that way to leapfrog into something post-Games. I think that will be a very significant human legacy. Um, I just would love to see you know, the Games be remembered as an outstanding illustration of how Scotland can do something spectacularly, but do it in such a way that the communities really believe, really engage and take it forward beyond 2014 into increased participation. I think there's a real business opportunity here. Let's see Scottish business having a real international outlook. That's what's needed. We're in a global economy. This is a big global event. Let's use that. Those are the sort of things I want to see come out of it. John Scott, thank you. Thank you.